If you get the feeling that you have a lot to accomplish in a very short period of time, Notion's use of the Eisenhower matrix may be the right solution for you. The Eisenhower matrix was invented by former US President Dwight D. Eisenhower and later popularized by Stephen Covey as the time management matrix. Combined with Notion's ability to simplify the decision-making process, it has the power to change your day, your week, or your month. The matrix is a 2x2 two two grid with urgency and importance as the two decision-making pillars. These are independent yet related to each other. Covey gave each of these quadrants numbers with distractions in quadrant 4 coming from areas like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and email. You may want to keep quadrant 4 playing a very small part of your life. Quadrant 3 items are pretty mundane or interruptions and hence form a big part of delegate, outsource or automate strategies for people and businesses. Quadrant 1 represents things that are seemingly on fire and represent the majority of us fighting day-to-day -day battles. But probably the biggest cause of Quadrant 1 battles is the fact that we aren't spending enough time on Quadrant 2, which represents a well-paced task. Let's look at how we can do this inside of Notion. To use the matrix effectively, you will need two databases. One is to record the tasks and the other one is to view the dashboard to know how you're faring. Let's call these databases tasks and EM dashboard. In the tasks database, let's add 10 tasks and two checkbox columns, important and urgent. The matrix tells us what to do when we arrive at a particular combination of importance and urgent. If it's important and urgent, it needs to be done soon. If it's important but not urgent, it needs to be scheduled. If it's urgent but not important, we delegate it or automate it. And if it's neither important or urgent, it should be trashed. Now let's build that into the actions formula. The formula is a nested if statement that asks the question, if the property important is ticked and quickly follows that up with the question, is it urgent? If both conditions are satisfied, then do and schedule are the true and false conditions. However, to continue with the false part of the important question, we ask if it's urgent, in which case we delegate and automate it. Otherwise, we move it to trash. The next column we add is a quadrant formula where we stamp the quadrant into the space. It's the same formula, but the quadrant is replacing the action. Since Notion does not automatically create relations based on conditions, we have to manually create relations with the EM dashboard. So let's create a relation column. Later when we click on it, you can choose the relevant row. Finally, let's create a column called match so that we can match the quadrant from the formula and the relation that we have created. This is pretty useful if we change one of our decisions later on. Let's use the leftmost calculate field and add a count function. In the task database, you have four hidden columns from quadrant one to quadrant four. These are simple formulae used to stamp the quadrant with one if the quadrant matches the quadrant column. This is useful for the rollup feature with the EM dashboard, which we shall see next. The EM dashboard reflects whether you're doing well against the benchmark and what percentage of your tasks fall into each one of the quadrants. If the number is not in line with the benchmark, it reflects red. Just remember, however, that we want as many tasks as possible in quadrant two because that's the magic productivity quadrant. This dashboard will have the following columns. The name which has four quadrants, a benchmark column which represents the benchmark that you want to set for each quadrant. This is a number and you can easily define this a percentage just like this. The goal column which we shall define as a number. Every time you add a task, you just input the number of rows into this formula. This is the only manual step you need to take in this entire exercise. In the alert formula column, the condition you will add is that the benchmark needs to be always higher than the actual achievement, which is yet another hidden column that we call as contribution percentage, which will also be a formula. 
However, for quadrant two, the condition is in the reverse. You're looking to keep the contribution percentage higher than the benchmark so that you can maximize time on it. Now let's look at the hidden columns. The tasks relation provides the relationship between the task and the EM dashboard database. We will add four roll-up columns, quadrant one to quadrant four. This will be a sum or a roll-up of all the quadrant items in the task database. Then you will add four progress bar columns, PQ1 to PQ4, representing progress bars for each of the quadrants. The reason for this is that the consolidated progress bar has different formula in each row, which is not possible in Notion automatically. I've discussed progress bars in the video shown above, and you should look at that in case you haven't seen it. The only condition we add to this progress bar is the if condition so that it creates the progress bar only if the row for that quadrant is the same as the column. Now we add four percentage columns for each quadrant to derive numbers for the alert formula. Quadrant one percentage to quadrant four percentage. One thing to note is that the rollups sometimes give errors when you're calculating ratios. So the best way to deal with this is to temporarily mark the roll-up as numbers, plug in the formula and switch these back again. Now we plug in the final formula called contribution percentage and add the following formula. Basically, this extracts the quadrant percentage depending on the actual quadrants under the name. So if you notice carefully, I have used the progress bar and the contribution percentage formula to extract different formulas from each of the rows to a single column. Once you're done with the tables, you can go ahead and hide all the helper columns like I did before. So did you learn something new from today's video? Do comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.